Hello and welcome to the 26th, yes, 26th episode of TechPad. Today, we've got a well-planned, as per usual, uh, TechPad, and we're we're coming at you live from the LPM yeah. podcasting room. Live. S yeah, yeah, live. And today, we're going to have uh, a pretty good discussion on uh, some, some interesting audio stuff. So, yes, without further ado, I'm Jackson, and this is Blaze. Let's get started. All right. So, first off, we're always going to start with a news article. This one's about right to repair. Then we'll be going into high fidelity sound, audio, mm -hmm. that, yep. and be discussing that stuff. So cool. Should be pretty fun. Yeah, for the news article. And are we getting good audio? Cool. cool. All right. Want to make sure. You got it there. All right, cool. All right, so the article, as you can see, is from Apple, so a little biased, <laughs> to say the least, but it is released on November 17th, 2021, and it's uh, called Apple Announces Self-Service Repair, and it's subtitled Apple Parts, Tools, and Manuals, starting with iPhone 12 and iPhone 13, available to individual consumers. So that's always nice. That's It's been a big thing yeah. with Apple. They've been getting hammered recently. <laughs> or not... Also, John Deere. Oh, yeah. John a Deere lot of companies repair, yeah. have been getting hit on pretty hard for that. All right. So just starting with it. Apple today announced self-service repair. Self-service. 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 Self-repair. We use an app called self-service. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about the <laughs> self-service app. Yes. Uh, which will allow cus customers who are comfortable with completing their own repairs access to Apple Genius parts and tools available first for the iPhone 12 and iPhone 13 lineups and soon to be followed by Mac computers featuring M1 chips self-service self repair will be available early next year in the US and expand to additional countries throughout 2022 customers join more than 5000 Apple authorized service providers AASPs and 2800 independent repairs repair providers who have access to these parts, tools, and manuals. All right. The initial phase of the program will focus on the most commonly serviced modules, such as the iPhone display, battery, camera. The ability for additional repairs will be available later next year. So it sounds very promising. And that's pretty much all they went over. Which would sound good. That's pretty much some yep. of it. I'm excited. I, I'm excited, but I don't know how easy it is to, to, to make their things super hard to repair. Yeah, and I've been scarred. I've expensive been scarred. Yeah. parts, which I feel well like, like they're going to mark that up a well lot. Like on the iMac, right? I mean, the 27 inch, I guess they don't do it on the M1 iMacs anymore. You can replace the memory. I mean, like, that was awesome. You could add more memory if you wanted. But yeah. we'll have to see the way that that turns out. See oh. if there is upgradable, yes, too, absolutely. as well as repair. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's get started on our topic for today. All right, Henry, you can, I don't know. Yeah, you could take my screen off now. Good. All right. All right. Cool. So, should we go over a few definitions? Sure, let's do it. All right, so, audio, you can take that one. Audio? Definition of audio, see how close you get to Yes. This. Audio is the thing you're hearing right now. It's the, the sound that is coming out of your speakers or it's what your computer's generating and it's, yeah. it's just what you hear. Like it's like recorded, yeah. transmitted, and pr reproduced. Yeah. As you said. So. Now, sound is vibrations that travel through air or another medium and can be heard when they reach a person's ear. So there's it's a little different. Yeah. Audio is sound that's especially through speakers. and that, Or audio is especially sound through speakers. And then sound is just sound. Sound is sound? Sound? That's a quote right there. Sound is sound. Almost as bad as uh, the infamous quote at Long High School. Mixing is mixing. Mixing is mixing. It's a fact. Uh, so That's an inside joke. <laughs> but what is high fidelity, Jackson? High fidelity. Well, <coughs> depends on who you are. <laughs> but high fidelity is very high quality sound, audio. Mm -hmm. very, it's rendered at a very high, what they call depth. Like it's very high resolution sound. It sounds, well, it's, it's up for debate, 
but sounds could sound better. Now there's always these disputes, but high fidelity is just listening mm. is just higher quality music than normal. Then or higher quality audio, I guess. It's also hi fi. Yep, that's the abbreviation. Hi-fi. And then there's lo fi too. Low fidelity, which is just lower quality sound. Yep. Or audio. That has more defects like distortion and unwanted noise. Speaking of which, what is distortion? Distortion. All right. So you have a sound file or audio file, yeah. right? So if you send it through, say, a receiver, what's the technical? Would be describe a receiver real quick. Well, it's um, <laughs> the thing that receives audio, audio, and sends it to an output. Sends it to the output. Yep. Okay. And sometimes a receiver can change the audio in a way. It doesn't change the track. It's not like mixing. Yeah but changes it in a way to make it sound different. The output sounds different from the input, yeah. pretty much. It's, it's just changing it. It's Distortion is anything that causes the audio to be different coming out than it was coming in. Even if it's just a little bit, that's, that's distortion. So would EQ be that, or is distortion more unwanted? Ooh, excellent question. EQ is controlled distortion. Okay. I would say, right. I would say, and you can definitely distort audio with EQ. Like you could comically bass boost. That's what the people that you know, their cars rumbling down the street, not because it's well, just because they have comically bass boosted songs, right? It's just and rumbling down the street. That's what they do. They just turn the bass EQ up. Huge speakers. Yeah, they're distorting. They're making the. Normally, we look at distortion in a negative way. It has like a negative mm-hmm. connotation to it. But I guess you could consider. Could it be used? Like, okay, bringing up it as a, it's mostly negative, but like, could it be used like in everywhere at the end of time? Distortion's used. Everywhere at the end of time, that is a prime right? example. Because it's heavily. Distortion. Heavily distorted. Yes. Um, and for those of you don't who don't know, um, everywhere at the end of time is kind of simulates dementia and like the distortion of memories. And it's like a, it's an album of songs that mm-hmm. are used to rep, like, you know, show how it feels to have like dementia and that sort of thing. And they've distorted the audio to make it seem like that, to give you the sense of it. And I think that that's, that is definitely distortion. But I think but that it's controlled distortion in a way that makes the piece Still better. more towards the yeah. EQ standpoint rather than trash. To say the least. Yes. All right. So, well, I mean, every I think everybody's heard of distortion. I don't know if we're describing it perfectly. I think that no. distortion is when you, like, when you hear something. Let's see. How would a normal person hear distortion? Oh, I know. You plug in your earbuds and your phone, and you turn the aux cable. Oh. As you go, and sometimes it'll you can hear like, yeah. As you as you do it, that's distortion. What about also plugging in while, yeah, or when you plug in that initial pop, that that's what distortion kind of sounds like. Okay. All right, and could and then equipment usually causes that lower quality. Yeah. Unless you are to mix it. And interference. Interference. Go over that real quick. Yeah. Interference. <laughs> you want to go over that, or you want you to? Go I think you'll have a better. Uh, I'll, I'll go. Well, um, you're driving down the road, and you have the FM radio on, or maybe the AM radio. <laughs> That's another example of distortion: is the AM static, it's just distortion. But you drive, and then you drive under some high voltage AC lines, and the radio kind of goes, <laughs> and then passes as you pass under it. That's just interference. It's just you know, oh. outside sources, not necessarily from your equipment, but like you know, outside. Electricity so or outside radio waves that are interfering with the sound waves. So, not grounding would also would yeah. that be yeah. interference, or would that be equipment based? Yes. 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 Okay. It's distortion. <laughs> yeah, distortion. It's distortion. Okay. Now, moving on to some equ- equipment. So, ah, yes. Well, what do you need 
for hi fi setup. Do you do you need a hi fi setup? Oh yes, that's I think better. we should go into to who not who a hi fi setup is and what a hi fi setup is. So you so have enthusiasts yeah. audio. Enthusiasts. You have people for studio for their job, yeah. pretty much. A studio setting who will need higher quality hearing. Yeah. And would there be another enthusiast and just studio? Yeah. Really? The two? The just they call the people that really like that have like a hi-fi setup and they really like audio, audio files. Audio files. Audio files, because they're paranoid about audio. They're audio files. That's what they're called. <laughs> Do I hear a little bit of feedback? And he's not paying attention. No, I no we're just playing at the end. We're, we're just playing at the end. Playing. <laughs> Speaking Sorry. of feedback, Super did we define paranoid. feedback too? Or do we need to for a hi fi setup? That's more recording audio, but true. would that also be put in there because you have to have high quality soundtracks, that is which true. means high quality yeah. recording. But let's say you're an audio pilot. Yeah. Or you call yourself an audio pilot. What does that mean? Uh, like if I say I'm an audio file, what's the connotation of you, being an audio file? It's kind of like a hobby that you take yeah, it's hobby, pretty yeah. far. Yeah. Well, you it's know, everybody has a hobby. But audio file is the next level. It's a very expensive hobby. Very. And it's, it's spending a lot of money and having really nice audio equipment to listen to music. Which you don't. Yeah. Some people would be like, hey, I don't need to listen to that high quality, high of yeah. quality music. But I guess this is like... What what would you compare it to? Well, I would say that an audiophile is, well, you know, like many people enjoy watching TV when they're bored. Mm -hmm. um, but an audiophile, instead of watching TV, they sit down and they consciously listen to music. That's the goal. It's a lot different than, say, listening to music in the car because you're driving and... Not well, fully focused on the yes, music itself. And, not, and you're not focusing on the music, but audiophiles... You sit down, you put on a really nice pair of headphones to get the best audio quality possible, and you just sit there and you listen to music. And that is the best, in my opinion, form of entertainment. Like, that is awesome. It's it is. so much fun to just sit down and just think and listen to the music and do nothing else. And that would be what an audiophile is. Holy moly, my phone is like my blowing up over goodness. here. Yes, yes, yes. Mine just... Uh, died, so that also works. So, okay, so hi fi. Now, records. They're also audio. Yes. And you can get really high quality records. That's true. And there's a different. Okay, well, yes. But, yes. But some records have pops. And yes. that. Would that be. Could you listen to that at well, high I would say quality that too? Well, an audio file. You see, it's tough because it doesn't really necessarily mean the source of the music Just or whatever you're listening to. Because the best part, if you ask somebody who's really into vinyl, is the expense and the inconvenience of listening to vinyl. And it's because it's physical, right? You can touch. It's, it's not like streaming Spotify where you yeah. just pull the track and hit go. You know, you, you actually look at the album art, right? It's physical, and you can read the descriptions on the album and you can actually hold it and look at the tracks and there's some put it down and you put yeah. such a cool experience because but it forces you to listen yeah and it forces you to be more into the music which is a great experience for a lot of people but if you're somebody like me who neither has the space or the money to do vinyl i i listen to title right Type. it's spotify but specializes in mastered and very high quality streaming as opposed to just regular quality streaming. Yeah. They like Spotify. So part of the experience of vinyl is the pops. And then they don't necessarily, an audio file probably, it's into vinyl, probably wouldn't care very much. And there's a different sound that comes from a vinyl. Even if it's really high quality and there's no pops, it's still different yeah. sound. Mm -hmm. but so you'd say high, audio file is more towards not so much the source. It's not so much the source. It's just the final product. Okay. That's and what I would say. 
and their equipment to make it sound as good as possible. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good. But, you know, we're talking about all this audiophile stuff, you know, being an audiophile, but what, and, and, you know, like great sound replication and no distortion and all that sort of stuff, but what is involved in a setup? What do you need to make an audiophile setup happen? You could, I would argue, you could just have a really high quality pair of headphones, which also yeah. needs its own equipment. So, a yeah. DAC. Dip, there you go. DAC. You guys close. Yep. I mean, the thing with all of this is that you could spend as much money as you want. It's endless. You, <laughs> when he says it's endless, I mean, you could spend like $21,000 on a pair of headphones, not even to need the amplification or the streaming equipment, just yeah. on the headphones themselves. Or you could spend thousands of dollars on the power cable to your equipment. Like this goes up and you know, above and beyond. But you, I would say you don't have to have that to have a great experience. Yeah. I think a good pair of studio headphones, 200 bucks? Yeah, bucks. And uh, the right equipment to power the headphones. Yeah. So, I mean, what's involved in powering the headphones? So, headphones have different headphones. Most headphones are have really low ohm. Yeah. Ohm? I think it's old. Ohm. 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 O-H-M. No, that's not how you spell it. So, yeah. basically the amount of power required to make these speakers go in the headphones, right? Resistance. Yeah. Resistance. Some have really high ones. Mine is 250. 250 ohm. That 250 sounds about right. Yeah. So it, to get really high bass or really good resonating bass, I would need a DAC. Yeah, or a headphone amp. Or yeah. headphone amp to power it because a normal phone does not do Typically, that. the trade-off of higher ohm, well, the, the benefit of having a higher resistance pair of headphones is better sound. Not always, but a lot of time, better sound quality, especially in the low end. Mm -hmm. And your phone, for example, has a little built-in headphone amp that's powering, you know, if, you s if you're lucky enough to have still have an aux port on your phone, um, it's powering your headphones. But when we say a headphone amp, this is like a standalone, it's, it's like, like a, a it's like... It's a box. You know, it's not that big, maybe. That's I mean, it's, it's a little bit, of it's, a, it's a piece of gear. Yeah. Um, maybe Blaze could look it up and make an NDI in, but it has more power to drive those headphones as opposed to just your phone speaker. And that definitely does sound better when you have a really high powered amp. So I would put some money into your headphones and your headphone amplifier. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, let's see, what other components are needed? I mean, how do you get the audio into your headphone amp? Like audio, you so you, have, you, you have title, you have some sound. How do you get it to your headphones? So you could go through your computer. That's a good idea. Could you run phone to DAC to headphone? I think so. Just some kind of audio input that inputs high quality. Yeah. So a DAC is a digital to analog converter. Mm -hmm. So that's how, and you can do this thousands of ways. You can have a DAC which converts your phone signal or the digital signal like through USB or through Bluetooth or through anything that's digital. Mm -hmm. into the sound waves, like the analog sound waves yeah. required by a headphone app or your headphones. So, and don't quote me on this. In fact, you may know about this more than I do. But you go from your computer, per se, through USB to your DAC and then to a headphone amp, or would you just go to the DAC? I think you could just go to a DAC. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Well, maybe there's like a combo. Sometimes I've, I've seen a combo yeah. where it has headphone amp, like a DAC. separate DAC and headphone amp, and you just stack them on top of each other. Yeah, and some of them are all one unit, too. Yeah. So I would put... I wouldn't put as much money into the DAC. No? Honestly. You know, it's one of those things that if it says, you know, a lot of things say made in America, and you think, oh, it was made in America, that's good. Not necessarily for DACs. Because China makes some very good DACs for very cheap. Mm -hmm. Very good sounding. And so you don't necessarily have to put, if you want to save some money, you can save money on the DAC area. It might impact your sound overall sound quality, but not as much as spending less on the headphones. So example. you get decent DAC. 
Yeah, you could get away with you know, a decent deck. And then higher quality headphones with the money you yeah. saved them. Yeah, and it maybe a higher quality amp, for, per se. Okay. But it's not always headphones. No. That audiophiles have. In fact... But that's probably, like, the most... Yeah, that's the budget. You know, get a nice pair of headphones. lowest. I have a pair of Audio-Technica ATM50Xs. You should have brought our headphones in. Yeah, I should have brought my headphones in to show. It's on my desk. Mm, I know exactly where it is. Yeah. And it's it's um, it's an interesting pair of headphones because it's made for sound mixing. So in, like... I'm trying to it's think. very neutral. Yeah, like, like in a pair of Beats, right? You probably have a very interesting equalizer wave that's preset into yeah that's them. preset that will amplify certain parts of the music so like the bass is amplified by the mid-range for mm -hmm. that audience um i think that's right to make the music that the target audience for the product sound better but in a studio pair of headphones there's no artificial increase or decrease in the sound because if you're Mixing a live concert, for example, or you're doing a recording, you want headphones that will replicate the sound as naturally. Otherwise, you might get double bass or no bass. Yeah, like if, if you have if your headphones that you're mixing and have double the bass, if it's bass boosted headphones, you're gonna wow, this sounds good, but you have the bass turned all the way down because your headphones are amplifying the bass. So you know the bass is turned down, and so your final product will have no bass because your headphones are amplifying yeah. the bass. So that's. But I chose those headphones because A, they were a little bit cheaper, and B, because it has it allows you to have fine control over what you want to hear in the headphones. So it has a software? Yeah, you? you can do it through software, or you can do it you know, however you want. But oh. I like that control. That's nice. But, what kind of but you have a way better pair of headphones than I do. Yeah, I have Far a... Far superior. Bayer Dynamic uh, closed back headphones. Yep. They're really nice. I really like them, but um, they were a little more expensive. They were. Uh, what did you say, Henry? Yeah. Uh, well, yes, that's correct. It doesn't show in preview, but we've offset the audio. So yes, it's under control. I can edit it in post. As much as I hate saying that, I'll fix it in the post. But you will, <sighs> or you can just. It's, it's fine. live. It's, it's live fun. production. Live. Oh, we just blew it. Yeah, we're pre-recording this episode. I said live. You blew it. Yeah, I blew it. Oh, well, yes, we're pre-recording this episode for those of you who don't, who don't know, but it's going to be right. live. Higher quality setups. You can get speakers. Yes. But then you need a room that's not yes. echoey. You can take this as far as you want. <laughs> yeah. You take it really far. <laughs> you can blow tons of cash on it. And what would you say for a studio? Probably using headphones, right? Like a studio environment? Yeah. Also using headphones for... See, so you can do that, but a lot of professional you know, recording booths have speakers. Really? And I think the speakers are a lot better for sound replication. It sounds more natural. You'll get a better mix out of it. Mm. And it's so much more comfortable than you wearing headphones. You just you you're just being blasted. You just about cables... You just you just enjoy the ambiance of music and and the bass sounds better in a physical room as opposed to headphones because you feel ba you feel bass mm -hmm. less hear it I mean you do hear a little bit but you feel it more which is why when you put headphones in you have to really crank it up to hear the bass but when you're at a concert you know you feel boom, you feel the you feel the bass that's the way sound and that's that's the way that's why that's why a kick drum kind of yeah. sounds empty in the headphones yeah. but in an auditorium it sounds really good it's like sound has time to travel yeah. with the speakers and, and developments it's just there yes and yes yeah, so they have really nice speakers and they have s i think it's two in the front possibly two in the back and on the sides too i mean it's a whole surround surround sound setup but I don't think it, that's like a professional, professional recording studio. You could take it that far if you want. Could. But that's. I wouldn't recommend it. Because you can save so much money and get almost the same experience. I mean, to a point, your ears aren't going to be capable, aren't sensitive yep. enough to hear the slight changes. 
that maybe a new pair of headphones would have. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> uh. <laughs> the interesting thing is, you know, this is a joke that, you know, old people are typically audiophiles. There's a lot of old people audiophiles. I don't know why there's more, yet, there's less younger people, but it's hilarious because there's this joke go floating around the audiophile that like, you know, how can you hear the difference in a pair of headphones when you can barely hear me shout your name across the room? Right, like, yeah, they're like, oh, these headphones sound so much better than the other ones. Well, yes, but you need hearing, hearing aids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like hearing's not too I good. Don't know, like barely an oscilloscope can measure the difference that you can hear. Wow. Old people, man. And all right, yeah. And then we talked about where to get audio, title, and a few other things. And then you go through streaming quality of the audio. Oh yes. How do you get the best audio quality? Usually a higher streaming rate through kilobytes per second, so which is that's like, as you were saying before, it's like resolution. Yeah. Quality. Higher streaming rate is higher resolution. Yeah. It's. And math. Like when you go and buy a TV, they measure resolution. Like you have 720p, 1080p, 4K. And that's the amount of pixels within a given area. It's the density of yeah. the pixels, effectively. This is the density of data in a yes. second. If you look at an artificial sound wave they generate, depending on the, qu let's just say one hertz, one hertz audio, one kilohertz, or just one okay. hertz, you're either gonna hear an up or a down. This, this that's like no quality whatsoever. But as you increase the kilobytes, you can increase the amount of change per wave. Like you can fine tune how smooth the wave is and that translates to perceived quality. So if you have a really low bit rate, it sounds kind of buzzy. Mm -hmm. It sounds kind of like um, like an arcade game almost. It's very, you know, it sounds digital. But if you have a really high bit rate in the audio, it sounds way up to a certain point, of course, sounds a lot better. Which I can too attest to that we should For do a test having a live audio should. test like compared okay so you can compare your earbuds like apple earbuds headphones headphones are probably better yeah depending on what they are of course yeah, yeah some are bad some are good and then speakers depends i like speakers your mileage may vary well I feel like you also have to sit in a very specific spot to get the best yeah. hearing from the speakers. Yeah. Speakers are interesting because if you have a speaker set up, you need a lot more equipment. You do. Because it's not just headphone amp. Because you have to drive speakers, which require, by design, more power. Because instead of pumping it into your little ear canals, you have to fill the room with sound. Mm -hmm. So you have the they call them amps. It's just, you know, a box that all its only purpose is to amplify the signal coming into it so that your head to and then drive the speakers. You need that also a couple of other pieces of equipment, don't you? No, oh, we got one minute. Receiver. Yeah, receiver. Of course. Receiver. So if you want to learn more about this hobby, which I definitely recommend you do. You can find a lot. The internet. I would go to the internet and I would Google Hi-fi audio setup. Don't get too caught up in how to audiophile. Don't get too caught up in it, though. So yeah, don't get too caught up in it. You can go really deep with audiophile stuff, but that'll give you all the information you need to know. And you don't need twenty-one thousand dollars. You don't need twenty-one thousand dollars to have a good setup. So I'd like to thank you for watching this episode of TechPad. If you're on Channel Eight, thanks for watching. Make sure to tune in to other LPM content. It's pretty awesome. Or come in and make your own content. If you're watching on YouTube, I'd like to thank you. Make sure you like, subscribe, the whole bit. Thanks for watching on Twitch if there's anybody out there. And thanks for watching on Facebook. I'll see you guys next time.